Hey everybody, Rob Holman with Northwest Fishing. I'm here with Shelby Ross on the Potholes Reservoir. We're going after some fall walleye. It's gonna be a great day. It's gonna be a great day. Keep watching. We've got a couple special guests on board today. We've got Adam Hagstead from Crave TV. He might cook something up for us a little later. And Michael Foster from the Washington Department of Fish and Wildlife Communications Department. Great to have you guys on board. So we're bottom bouncing out in uh, the middle of the reservoir on some uh, deep sand humps. It's just, just rolling sand humps and a different uh, style of fishing than uh, in the spring. Fish a little bit deeper water. It's 37 foot right here. And so these walleye will be here out in this deep water all winter. This is where their bait fish that their, their food is. And uh, then in the early spring, they'll move up to uh, spawn in all of the uh, creeks that feed the reservoir. So similar, we'll be bottom bouncing a uh, night crawler with a spinner. Similar to uh, our spring technique, we're just in deeper water and use a little more weight to do so. And uh, yeah. So what we're using today is just a simple uh, Mustad slow death hook. See the odd bend to that hook. and. Jumbo Nightcrawler on about a four foot leader, and this odd bent hook, the slow death, makes the Nightcrawler spin like a corkscrew. It's pretty critical to get uh, the crawler threaded on there perfectly and up past the collar. Put the point out, pull the worm up over the knot, the knot helps keep it up on the hook, and so you end up with about half of the bend uncovered and that'll give you that uh, corkscrew spinning motion. We'll stick it over the edge of the boat here. That spinning motion is uh, critical to uh, getting the walleye bite. Is there any way to dress that up? Uh, you could put uh, beads, uh, Max Smile Blade in front of it, and Anything you put in front of the slow death impedes that spinning action, so it, it just affects the way it spins. So lately, this bare rig has been been catching better than than with anything else on it. Some days that uh, smile blade is critical to getting bit. So magic touch there. That didn't take long, shall we? Yeah, it's happening. You hold the pole in front of the reel, you have a little better leverage. Now lift. Got stuck off. Nice release. <laughs> 16 inch walleye. Nice start. First walleye. Got it is. Up. That's that's the first one. That's me. awesome. What a beautiful fish. What a great smile it's got. <laughs> Fantastic. Well, thank you for that. You got a lot first. And it's okay, Michael, if you catch another one before anybody else has a bite, <laughs> we don't be polite here. <laughs> dropping, off, dropping off too deep. Uh, you, can, you can feed it line and fish. On the end of this hump is some habitat boxes, and we don't want to drive into them. So if I start yelling, Hold up. you reel up real quick because uh, the habitat structures eat tackle. On Potholes Reservoir, we have a uh, habitat project that uh, Mike Meesberg from Mardon Resort got a permit for 10 years ago to put in uh, these artificial habitat structures. There are over 4,000 of them in the reservoir. There are uh, four foot by four foot by eight foot PVC boxes wrapped in uh, orange construction fence. And they provide cover for the small fish when the reservoir is drawn down in the fall. In the spring, there's lots of cover with willows that are flooded, but as the reservoir is drawn down for irrigation, all that structure is high and dry, so these uh, artificial structures provide that cover for the little fish. Shelby, there's more than walleye in potholes. 
there is. There's uh, several other species, uh, perch, crappie, bluegill, rainbow trout, uh, carp, largemouth bass, smallmouth bass, uh, robot, channel cat. I think that's about the, uh, the majority of them. <laughs> sure. But uh, not uncommon to catch some other species when we target the wall. You got no bait? Yeah. <clears throat> you got a fish with bait, Adam. Fishing on credit, you got a fish. <laughs> Get it out of the rod holder. You look like a rookie. Yep. <laughs> That's funny. I wonder if he was along for the ride. Yeah, I think he was. How long have you been dragging that fish? Uh, you know. Left. Oh, it's a nice walleye. <laughs> That's classic. That's funny. <laughs> I would consider them the best eating sport fish. Okay. That's a great point. Do you think they're better than halibut? Yes, I do. What about lingcod? Well, I lingcod pretty close tie to me. Yeah. The only fish that I know of that is still really good, left over. Yeah. <laughs> Seriously. Yeah. They, look, they actually look pretty similar to cod. I think they look really similar to lingcod or... All toothy and... Yeah. yeah. The, uh... The speed yesterday was one mile an hour, so 0.9 to 1.1. As our water temps cool in the fall, usually you got to go slower and slower because the fish are just less active. And here, a couple weeks ago, we were pulling crankbaits at two to two and a half miles an hour, and they just won't chase them as the water cools. They just won't won't chase them that fast. So back to bait and slower at one mile an hour. And, and conversely, in the spring, we'll start at 0 0.6, 0 0.7 miles an hour when the water's really cold, when we're just ice off. And as the water temps warm, we'll bump that speed faster and faster. And I wanna go as fast as I can and still catch fish because if you could go 1.2 miles an hour versus one mile an hour, you know, you covered 20% more water during the day. So critical deal. Here's a, here's a fish underneath us, cruising a little bit off the bottom, active feeding walleye, there's another one. And you were saying we're looking for this structure, so there's a hump here that uh, yeah, we're you, working. Yep, you can see on the contour map here on the hummingbird, how it shallows up here versus dropping off into 40 plus foot of water all the way around it. More Northwest fishing after the break. Woo! I'm so lucky to be here with Rob Holman. <laughs> Celebrity fisherman. Rob Woolman showed me how to do this. <laughs> We're gonna you edit one, that you out. Got one behind you. You got one behind you. Get that one too, Adam. Guys, I'm just catching Double so Double header. <laughs> Double header. You on there? Yep. Oh yeah. yeah. Dude, this is fast and furious, Adam. They call this catching. <laughs> <laughs> You've been waiting for that one. Yeah. So do they school up, shall we? So, like perch will school because it's safe. The walleye will school because there's more food. The more oh, food there is, the more is. walleye will be there. And so that's kind of the difference. Can't wait to eat that. Yeah, Rob, are you gonna get? Are you gonna um, catch a fish? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Let's good. Get some more. Good question. <laughs> I'll show you how it's done. Thanks. Do you, do you take some notes? I'm so glad you came. Watch this. Uh, watch the, the video. If we ever do a playback. <laughs> <laughs> Shelby, you say we're gonna get some more? I don't see why not. We got a little bit of a bite going on here, and, and Shelby's recommending I feed a little bit of line out. Shelby, why am I doing that? So the, the fish is chewing on the worm, and I think he took the back half of the thing off. And so you can entice him to come back and take the rest of it by letting out a little more line, slowing the bait down. And he might have just eaten your bait. I don't think he's on there anymore. <laughs> and took off, huh? But that's a, feeding some lines a good technique just, when they start. Yeah, slows your bait down so they're not having to chase it at one mile an hour. Sure. And, uh, these fish are, are really well fed. There's, there's just a ton of food in the water. So they really don't have to chase your bait. But if it's in front of their face, you know, they'll, they'll eat it. So. Spot after the break here. You got a quick recommendation on getting our rods in. 
So what works good for traveling is uh, if you uh, put the bottom bouncer just uh, beyond your reel and hang it like this into the rod holder, like so, and just put your bait somewhere where you're not going to step on it, and uh, easy way to travel to the next spot. So sometimes the walleye bite is so subtle, you don't even notice it, especially if you've got the rod in the holder and you're not paying attention. And he's getting bit right there. Feed him line, feed him a little line. Swing and a miss. But like I say, I was saying, sometimes the bite is so subtle if you don't notice that bite and you just keep fishing without checking your bait, you're trolling around a little tiny bit of crawler, that's not going to get bit most of the time. And so our term is you're fishing on credit, probably not going to uh, be productive. And, and I had been for a while, probably. It's been a little bit since I've checked my bait. So and I suspect Rob has no bait either after. Uh, <laughs> that one's persistent. Probably a perch or something. Perch, bluegill, any of the above. A little better fish there? Yeah, definitely not yeah. the uh, 15 inch that uh, we just had. Uh, could be a largemouth, could be a catfish. Could be a big walleye, no idea. We'll see here in a moment. You gotta like the boat. How does that feel, Michael? You know, almost feel like uh, what I'm usually doing this time of year. <laughs> Fishing salmon on the Olympic Peninsula. This is kinda tough. So the best fighting ones in here are the bass usually, right, Shelby? Yeah, the, the smallmouth bass especially. That is largemouth bass. Nice largemouth. Four pound largemouth. So, talk about the uh, largemouth slot size as well. Uh, I need a pair of pliers. If you can hold that guy here for a moment, I'll go get a pair of pliers. Is that your first largemouth, Michael? First largemouth. No. Two firsts already, huh? That's, right. that's, that's a good today. one. That's not an average largemouth. Yeah, this is great. Yeah, like I said, usually it's all salmon and steelhead from the Island Olympic Peninsula. This is the first real endeavor to uh, warm water for me. That's great. Yeah. So, get him unhooked here. And uh, the, uh, the largemouth bass, uh, there's a huge tournament following in eastern Washington. And most of the largemouth bass are not retained. So most of the largemouth bass, or, or people focused on bass fishing, do not keep if it's primarily catch and release. There is a, a, a slot limit for them to keep, and uh, so it is a, a five fish limit with one fish over 17 inches, no fish between 12 and 17 inches. And really if they're under 12 inches, there's no meat on them anyway. And this guy is probably right in that slot. We could measure. We're not going to keep him anyway, but he's... I think in that slot of 12 to 17 inches. So we're going to get him back in the water and um, let him go. Fantastic. Fantastic. Thank you, Joe. One more? I think he might have just made a bass fish or not. That was fun. <laughs> that was a good fight. Awesome. Hey, we're back from the break, everybody. That was really exciting. That largemouth bass Michael just caught. Um, but we got interrupted. You're talking a little bit about your boat policy and your guidelines for your clients, um, how you advocate for this uh, sure. larger and, fish. And uh, a mature female walleye will produce 300,000 eggs every year. 
and so that's the future of our fishery. Right. And you know, these fish are not planted. There's there's no walleye hatchery, and we have to take care of this resource, and that's one way we do it. Sure. So you you want everybody as much as possible letting go of those fish at 22 inches or above. Sure, and, and you know, it's it's every case is different, and it's not like it's a you know. You have to do this. Somebody gets in the boat, their first walleye is 25 inches, they want to put it on the wall, absolutely. Right. You know, so, yes. But the, uh, but the point is, you want to be a good steward of this resource. Sure. Right on. Well, that's good to know. So, we're going to look for five fish per person and releasing our big ones today. And that's plenty for a nice fish fry. Absolutely. Evidence would seem to suggest. It, it is one, it is the quickest reaction ever. <laughs> You gotta hold it out. The parcel is huge. <laughs> <laughs> So we're five for 25 if you're keeping score at home. Not a very good uh, percentage of uh, hookups compared to bites, but uh, that happens. And, and uh, as the day warms, I bet the bite gets a little more aggressive and, and uh, our average improves a little bit. Being lazy. You're killing it, Adam. Another why? Fish the day. Did you get one? I did. I actually figured that out. I thought it was like a little perch or bluegill or something. Oh, yeah. Look. It oh, is. Oh, yeah. Actually, a pretty nice sized bluegill. Yeah. It is a nice bluegill. One of those bonus fish. That's a good eating, right? Those are great eating. Yeah. And pound for pound, I think they fight harder than any species yeah. on earth. <laughs> So we're gonna keep that, huh? Gonna lift you guys. You wanna? Yeah, let's do it. Uh -huh. That'll be a nice little crispy fillet. Yeah. Right on. That's uh, bigger than average bluegill for 99% of the places in the United States. Right on. There's some even bigger ones. You're good. Got to take just a minute and talk about uh, our uh, rod reel setup that we use while I bottom bouncing. This is a seven and a half foot uh, medium action rod, and it's got good backbone and a light tip so you can feel every little tiny nibble. I use a braided line. This is 20 pound braid. You don't need that heavy line, just helps you get some gear back when you get hung up. And if you're not getting hung up occasionally, you're not walleye fishing, they tend to just live near the bottom. Uh, for a reel, I like these Quantum Accurus with this flipping switch here on the side. And what that does is when you're letting out line, as you're dropping into deeper water, you push the button down, it only lets line out with your thumb on the button. So you don't have to click the bail like a traditional baitcaster would. And that really simplifies just being able to pay line out, especially with the two rod endorsement. If you're running two rods at the same time, just uh, simplifies uh, being able to keep your bait on the bottom. Lift reel all the way to the end of the reel. Laying today. One more walleye for the fish drive. Came off in the net. <laughs> Adam the catcher. Yep. <laughs> so it's important to really take care of these fish for the best table fare. <laughs> I didn't step on it yet. <laughs> Another episode of Northwest Watching Reports. Watching me <laughs> fish. <laughs> well, we dropped the reports because now we're just oh. Northwest Watching. Yeah, Northwest Watching. Fishing with Adam show. Yep. It's a fine line between fishing and sitting in a boat looking stupid all day. <laughs> we're doing the latter. You, however, appear to be fishing. <laughs> Good job. 
And Adam, do you want to tell people in Eastern Washington how they can uh, watch more of you and and the cooking segments that you provide to people? Watch us on Crave TV, weekends on Fox. Or go to cravenw.tv to check out some more episodes. Watch us on Crave TV, weekends on Fox, or go to Crave TV. Watch us on Crave TV, uh, weekends on Fox. Fox. Hey Shelby, we've got a couple special guests on board today. We've got Adam Hagstead from Crave TV. He might cook something up for us a little later. And Michael Foster from the Washington Department of Fish and Wildlife, making sure we do everything right. <laughs> Okay, we'll just spinning? Not really spinning. Looking sleepy. <laughs> You're just drowning worms. <laughs> so the area that we're fishing, like I said, we're out here in the middle of the reservoir, and here's a shallower hump on the uh, on the map you can see. And so we're surrounded by 40 foot of water. This this uh, hump here is 26 foot right here, and the walleye are up on this shallower hump feeding. And uh, I had one on the screen here just a moment ago when I told you to turn the camera on, but now it's gone. <laughs> so now we'll just talk about nonsense until there's a walleye on the screen. <laughs> and now that the camera's on, it won't be a walleye until we shut the camera off. And that's how fishing on TV works. <laughs> Oh, 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 I caught Shelby. I wish I wish you would have had a better angle on that. <laughs> on the boat today, we got a couple guests. Chef Adam Hegstead from Crave TV. He might cook something up a little bit later. Perfect. And we got Michael Foster from the Washington Department of Fish and Wildlife on board to make sure we're doing everything right. <laughs> you, want me, you want me to pan, pan over? Yeah.